Hey guys, in the previous tutorial, we used a little physics simulation called Verlet Integration to create a rope in Unity, which doesn't require us to use any Unity hinge joint components, and it was very easy for us to imitate a rope effect using uh, Verlet Integration. So if you hit play right now, this was basically a rope simulation that we created in the previous tutorial. In today's tutorial, we're going to create a rope bridge in Unity, which basically connects two points in the system and uh, makes a cable component between them. So I created a little demo beforehand. You can see that the bridge is connected by two points. The first point is one end of the bridge, and the second point is the other end of the bridge and it basically creates a cable component between them. This is a little variation of the rope effect that we created in the first tutorial, and it's very easy for us to create this effect by using the previous script that we wrote before. So if you haven't checked out the first tutorial for creating a rope in Verlet Integration, I would highly recommend you to check that out first. So all we need to do to create this rope bridge is to modify some constrained part of the function that we created for the rope. So if you go back into the script, in the apply constraint function, we basically made two constraints for the rope. The first constraint is that the first position of the rope must always follow the mouse position. And the second constraint of our rope is that the distance between the two segments of the rope must always amount to a certain distance. So in our script, we set that the distance between the two segments must always be 0.25. So if the rope is too long, we have to shorten the rope. And if the rope is too little, then we have to widen the rope so that the distance between the two segments must always be 0.25. In order to create a bridge, we just need to add two more constraints to the apply constraint function, which says that basically one end of the rope must always follow the first point and another end of the rope must always follow the second point. Also, this means that we can remove the first constraint that we created for the rope, which says that uh, the first position of the rope must always follow the mouse position, since the bridge has nothing to do with the mouse position. And in order to have the first point and the second point, we need to add two fields that take in the position value from the scene. So we can do that right here. And for the constraint code, it's basically going to be very similar to the mouse. So in the beginning, we're going to basically get the first segment of the rope. Which is basically the same as uh, what we had before. But the position of the first segment has to be the position of the field that we're going to take in from the scene. And we called it start point. And we're going to add the changed position back to the array. And we can basically remove the constraint code that we had for the mouse position. For the second constraint, it's basically going to be the same, except that we're going to get the end segment of the rope. And we're going to set, and we're going to set the position of the end segment or the last position of the rope to the endpoint that we have as a field. And we're going to add the segments back into the array. So that's basically it for the constraint code. If we go back to the scene, we can disable that. You can see that the rope script now needs two fields as a parameter. So we can just create the first point of the rope and the second point of the rope in the scene as a game objects to be taken as the fields of the rope. And if you just drag first point of the rope to the start point and the second point of the rope to the end point, And we go into play mode, 
you can see that the bridge is now bounded by the first point and the second point that we created in the scene. And we can move around the first point and the second point and the rope will follow that point. So that's it for today's tutorial. If you found the tutorial to be useful, please leave the thumbs up button. If you have any questions or suggestions, please leave your comments below. I also left my project download in the description below so you can access it.